In a previous video, you guys saw me put together the CR250 bottom end only to have to split the cases once again because of a missing washer. So I've got that washer on hand. I'm gonna install it and get the rest of this bottom end back together. I am super excited. Let's get started. So let's recap things a little bit. When I went to go spin the transmission after I assembled it, I noticed it would bind at some point. So right there, it's coming to a bind. And that led me to digging into the transmission and finding that missing washer. So it goes right underneath this gear, the last gear on the counter shaft. So we have a washer on top, the gear, and then there's a little spacer in here. So that washer was supposed to sit right underneath the spacer and the gear. So they call that a thrust washer. It's like a $2.50 piece. It's crazy how such a small part can cause so many issues. So the transmission was binding and then it wouldn't want to shift in a neutral either. All right, let's go ahead and install this washer and make sure everything is working properly. So most washers are gonna have a rounded and a flat face to it. So the rounded face always goes up. So it looks like that's the correct washer. I'm gonna slide on the gear, the spacer, and the washer. Here we go. Looks like it all fits on there good. Now, let's see if it binds at all. Man, that's, that spins pretty buttery smooth. No signs of any binding. All right, now to test to see if it goes into neutral. So I believe I'm in first gear here, all the way at the end of the drum. And one click over will be neutral. Right there should be neutral. And how to test this, I'm gonna hold the main shaft and spin the counter. And they're gonna spin independently of each other. So you see the counter shaft is spinning, but I'm holding the main shaft. So that is indeed neutral, sweet. So once again, guys, before you fully assemble your transmission, make sure you've got all the clips, washers, gears, all that in place before you put the cases together. Learn from my mistake. It is time to slap the left crankcase back onto the engine. Now I've got the cases pressed together thanks to this Tusk crank puller tool. These things are super handy to have. And before I put any case bolts in, I'm definitely gonna go through all the gears in the transmission, make sure it shifts smoothly, and check the shafts or any excessive end play. Now that is how it's supposed to spin right there. Super smooth and there's no binding at all. Now I'm gonna go through the gears and make sure everything is in order. All the way down is gonna be first gear and then halfway up is neutral. Right there is neutral. So I'm holding the counter shaft from the other side, from the output side and spinning the main shaft. You can see they are not spinning together. So that's neutral. Right there is third fourth and fifth. Now that's a huge relief to know that everything within the cases is good to go. Just gotta pop those case bolts back in and then I can start assembling the clutch and the gear shift components. Now, before I proceed any further, this excess gasket material is kind of bugging me. So I'm gonna shave it down with this little scalpel flush with the gasket surface. Okay, first up, I'm gonna assemble the gear shift components that go right here. 
So that will be everything laid out here on the table. And once again, just like the previous video, I've got the diagrams printed out. And these are a huge help for seeing how everything goes together and making sure you've got all the little bits and pieces. So thanks to this Nihilo Concepts engine stand, I can get the engine at pretty much any angle I need. So it's gonna make the most sense in this position here. I'll have a good angle at getting all these pieces into place. The first piece that needs to go on is gonna be the tensioner for the shift drum. So that's gonna include the tensioner arm, looks like the spring, a washer, and the retaining bolt. See if I can find this stuff here. Here's the arm. We've got the spring. The bolt is gonna have a little edge on it or a, uh, a shoulder. And that looks like the washer. So when looking at this diagram, looks like the spring goes on first in that position. And then we have a washer in between. And in order for the washer to stick to that little stud, I'm gonna put a dab of grease on there. That should keep it in place. And let's see here. Looks like there's a little notch on the tensioner arm. That is gonna hook up with the spring. It's gonna go just like that. To be honest, it's actually gonna be easier to install that tensioner with the end piece off of the shift drum. And that's usually how I install them anyways. But I just have this piece on here from the get-go. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that off and that should make my life a little easier. So not a huge deal to pull this thing off. Might as well do it right. All right, so we've got the spring, the washer. Get this arm into its position. sure everything lines up here there we go and I'm gonna put a little bit of Loctite on the shoulder bolt just got uh, some blue medium strength here and as I'm tightening down this retaining bolt here got to make sure that shoulder fits within the arm so just kind of wiggle things around and that will allow that shoulder to go into place and the torque should be around six or seven foot pounds on that one. Now the spindle can go back on and you definitely want to put Loctite on this bolt as well. With this piece, you definitely got to make sure that groove lines up with the pin on the shift drum. So kind of line it up before you set it down and then just spin it around until it locks into place. So right there it's locked in and then the bolt can go back in. All right, so basically what this tensioner does is it keeps the bike in the gear. So you can see as I spin the shift drum, it is gonna lock into each of those detents. So see the notches where that roller or the tensioner roller sits? It locks right into there and that keeps the bike in the gear. So right now we're in first and I'll show you kind of how the neutral setup works. I'll bump it up halfway. It's like you're shifting up halfway and that little half detent there, that is neutral right there. And there's a detent for each of the five gears and neutral. Just gotta torque the center bolt to 16 foot pounds and then I'll be ready to install all the pieces here on the inside. Now for this part, there's a lot of little pieces to the puzzle. So I'm gonna refer to the diagram and make sure I've got everything here. Should have two springs, two poles, two pins, this little washer or spacer, and the centerpiece that all this stuff goes in. So just to keep everything together, I'm gonna put a little bit of assembly lube inside this piece. It always helps with assembly too. So first thing goes a spring inside of each hole. And then a pin goes on top of that. And then to top it off goes this little pole they call it. So the slotted side goes in. You 
you can see there's a right and a left pole. This one is installed correctly because the slot lines up with a pin. And then if I took the other one, try to line that one up, you can see the slot would be off. So that goes on the other side. So I'm gonna hold this pole down with one hand, come over to the other side, kind of make it a mess with this assembly lube, but it's part of it. Get the spring in there, grab the pin, put that on top. And the pawl goes on top of that. So that's what it looks like all put together. Now before I slide the whole setup into the shift drum, it doesn't hurt to put a little bit of assembly lube in there. So before this piece goes into the shift drum, I'll have to slide the retaining plate on top of it. Just gotta be super careful going in not to knock those pawls and pins out of that part there. And then once again, these bolts will need some Loctite. And then the last piece for the shifting assembly is the shift shaft. This just goes right through the hole that goes through both of the cases. Make sure there's a washer on here. Right here, that washer. Most bikes will have that. Uh, looks like I'm gonna have to spin this piece around a little bit for it to line up. Well, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to flip this thing around. I had it together wrong. There we go, that fits a little better. Before I tighten down these bolts, I'm gonna check to see if the shaft lines up. And it's gonna need a little bit of lube here for where it goes through that seal on the other side. Yep, looking good. All right, I'm gonna pop the shifter onto the other side of the engine and make sure all the shifting stuff is working properly. All right, I'm gonna show you guys exactly how this works when you shift the bike. All right, I'm gonna figure out what gear I'm in right now. Should be in first. All right, spinning the shaft, I'm gonna go up into neutral. It's neutral right there. Now that I've got the gear shift assembly out of the way, it is on to installing the kickstart shaft. And just like the transmission, Got a diagram printed out here, and this time I'm actually gonna go through and check each individual washer and clip. Not gonna mess it up this time. So starting at the very end here, looks like we've got a spring, and then a, looks like a gear with splines in the center, this part right here, and then a circlip and a washer. I see a washer and obviously a circlip. Then the main gear, that's obviously in place. And then on the other side, there's supposed to be a washer here. Take a look, see if we got that. I do not see the washer there. Yeah, so number 10 right here, supposed to be a washer on this side of the gear and it is missing. See if I can dig that one up somewhere. Thankfully, I had a bunch of random hardware from this engine, got it in a bag with the bike and I found the washer inside of there. So that'll work out perfect. Slides right onto the shaft and looks like it's a good fit. So like I mentioned earlier, it definitely pays to check all your washers and clips. I'm not sure what kind of effect that would have had missing this washer, but you know what? The diagram shows it, you gotta have it on there. And then past that washer, we've got the shaft, a little collar, this part right here, and then the main recoil spring and also there is another gear that goes on the counter shaft and it looks like there's a sleeve behind it as well. Let me go find that sleeve. Actually, it's right here. So that sleeve, make sure it fits onto the gear. Yep, it's all good. So time to assemble the kickstart shaft onto the engine.
One thing I need to mention with this kickstart shaft is this piece on the end needs to go on in a certain position. There's a little dot right here, little locating mark, and that needs to be lined up with the dot on the shaft as well. Go ahead and get those lined up, like right about there. So having this piece lined up is pretty critical because it does set the tension here on the spring and aligns the stopper tab in the correct position as well. Just like installing any other part, especially one this high up on the engine, definitely want to put some assembly lube inside some of these areas. And then to install the kickstart shaft, this tab that I mentioned earlier needs to go behind the stopper plate. So to slide it in until it is right above the stopper plate and then rotate it behind. You need to get the spring on the other side. So right there is where it should be. And then for the main spring here, you gotta make sure the sleeve right inside of here is over the tab that goes into the shaft. I'll show you a better angle here. So you gotta have the sleeve around the tab on the spring that protrudes down into the shaft. Looks like it's together correctly. It's gonna set some tension here on the spring and line up this tab with this hole on the crankcase. Just like that. Make sure it's all settled. All right, we're good to go for that part. And then just below the kickstart shaft is the transmission counter shaft. And this is where the kickstart idler gear goes on to. So I've got the little sleeve on. I'm gonna put some more assembly lube and then the idler gear slides onto here. So this idler gear is what transfers power from the kickstart shaft to the clutch basket, which is attached to this shaft, and then eventually makes its way to the crankshaft. There's one last little thing before I start to assemble the clutch. The crank primary gear needs to go on. So that is gonna be these four pieces right here. We've got the bolt, a washer, the gear itself, and a sleeve that goes behind it. So I've got all that right here. And whenever you're installing a gear onto a shaft, you wanna make sure there's no markings here on the gear or the end of the shaft. That usually indicates that things need to be lined up. But with this one, I don't see any markings, so it's good to go. It can be put on in any position. I'm just gonna leave this bolt loose for now since it's easier to set the torque once I have the clutch all together. But don't let me forget that one, guys. If you guys are enjoying the videos, make sure you support the channel by shopping over at primemx.com. I've got hats, t-shirts, stickers, and a few of the supplies used throughout the videos over there as well. I'll put the link as the first one down below. For the clutch, there's a lot of pieces to it, so I need to check this stuff over. Starting from the shaft, it looks like we've got a spacer and a needle bearing. The spacer is right here, needle bearing. Clutch basket, there's a washer that goes in between. Uh, should be this one right here, it's the thicker one. Clutch inner hub, so the basket here, the inner clutch hub, and the push rod, or the rod that goes through the center. That's what activates the clutch and then the whole plate set that is soaking in oil let me zoom in here we've got a, another washer this one right here the tab that goes underneath the nut that is a like a locking tab so this one right here this is the old one definitely always want to replace those so I've got the new one right here and then the nut that holds everything together. And that nut is right here. Shoot, this thing is pretty beat up. I should almost replace it. I'm gonna dig through my parts bin and see if I can find one of those. So when you see this right here, where the diagram has like a cutaway, that'll be like a different design, or in this case, a different order of the parts. So you definitely wanna make sure you've got it together correctly. So for this one, I'll have to go look at the diagram online to figure out which one is the correct order. All right, I'm over here on Rocky Mountain's diagram and how I'm gonna differentiate the order here is we've got, looks like a 19 and a 20, and then a 24 and a 25. So I'm gonna scroll down, look at all the part numbers here. So it looks like we've got a 19 and a 20, 
and no 24 and 25. So that would indicate that the design for this bike needs to be the 19 and 25. So washer first, followed up with the locking tab or the locking plate. And then continuing on down the line, looks like we've got the lifter piece, a bearing, a washer, and the clip. So that's all pretty much one piece. And that is this part right here. And then finally, on top of the clutch is the clutch pressure plate, all the clutch springs, and the clutch bolts. So I've got new clutch springs right here. And there should be five clutch bolts. So it looks like everything is here. Time to start assembling the clutch. So just like the diagram shows, I've got the spacer and the needle bearing up first. And I'm just gonna coat everything in this assembly loom. And then next up is this washer that goes in between the basket and the inner hub. And there's a rounded face or a rounded edge and a flat edge. If you run your finger along the edge, you'll be able to feel the difference there. So the round edge is gonna be facing out. Can't forget some lube here. And then next comes the clutch inner hub. So I've got the washer, this retaining clip, it just goes on like that with the tabs locking around the, uh, the hub here. Just make sure that's locked in. And I was able to find an identical nut off of a CRF 450 that I parted out, but it's in a lot better shape than the old one. So that worked out perfect. I really should have just gone out and bought a new nut for this, but you know what? You gotta work with what you got. Now the easiest way to torque the center nut for the clutch is gonna be to use a clutch holder tool. So I've got this tool from Rocky Mountain, just grabs onto the clutch hub like so. So I'll show you how this works in a second. I'll be torquing that nut to 59 foot pounds. Now I'm just gonna clamp this tool onto the inner hub, but definitely not gonna to put too much pressure on it. Don't wanna damage that hub. Set the torque wrench to 59 foot pounds and then I'll be all ready to torque. Now this is actually the first time I've ever used one of these clutch holder tools. Didn't damage the hub at all and it gave me some great leverage to torque down the nut. So I would definitely recommend grabbing one of these from Rocky Mountain. Now the whole purpose of this locking washer is to bend the tabs onto the nut that way there's no possible way this nut can ever come loose. So I'm gonna bend some of these tabs over using some pliers here. Okay, now I've got the clutch plates ahead of me. So I've had these friction plates soaking in oil overnight, just in this Maxima MTL oil, since that is what I'll be using in this bike. So you really only need to soak the friction plates. The steel plates do not need to be soaked. Although it's a good idea to have oil on them upon installation. And the clutch kit I'm using is this Tusk setup that Rocky Mountain sent over. So big, big thank you to those guys for providing this kit. So all the friction plates on this bike are the same. They've all got this little notch here on what looks like three of the tabs. So I'm gonna line all those up here in the basket. Just gonna reposition the stand a little bit before I start sliding these in. There we go. So the first one goes in. It doesn't matter um, whether it's, you know, which way it's facing, they're all the same. And now for the steel plates. So there's a rounded edge and a flat edge on each plate. If you run your finger along the edge, you'll be able to notice the difference. So I've always ran the plates with the rounded edge facing out. And I did some research and I noticed a lot of people are saying, run the plates with the smooth or the rounded edge facing in. So I'm gonna try it on this one with the rounded edge facing in. But honestly, I've never noticed the difference with the rounded edge facing out. It might just be me, but I'm gonna give it a shot for this build. So we're just gonna alternate steel and friction, steel friction. And then lining up these notches in the basket as well.
All right, guys, that's it for the clutch plates. Gonna move on to installing the rod and the lifter piece that goes on the end, followed up with the pressure plate. So here's the push rod. This runs through the center of the engine and connects to the clutch cable on the other side. So it's the same on either end. Doesn't matter which way it goes in. Just gonna lube up everything super good with this assembly lube. And then of course, we've got the clutch pressure plate followed up with some new clutch springs. These are from Rocky Mountain. Tusk is the brand. So I just found out I'm missing one of these bolts. On the old hub, there was a bolt snapped off in it and that's why I replaced it. So I'm gonna have to dig through the parts bin once again and see if I can locate one of these clutch bolts. Right on, I found one from the same CRF 450 that I parted out. It's the same length and everything, but it's a little bit different color. But who's gonna know the difference? It's always a good idea to tighten these bolts down in an even, consistent pattern. You kinda wanna do like a star pattern or just alternate every one. Now the torque spec on these is seven foot pounds. So I'm gonna tighten it in the same fashion as I did earlier. Sweet, that is it for the clutch. I am completely done with it. Oh, and I almost forgot. I still need to torque the crank primary gear bolt to 47 foot pounds. And how I'm gonna do this is by taking a rag and stuffing it in between the clutch gear and the crank gear, just like that. And with that, I should have all the leverage needed to torque this bolt down. And another thing you can actually do here is put a penny in between the gear as well, or I think Motion Pro makes a gear holder tool so it's like a little gear jammer that you put in there as well. But we'll see how the rag trick works. So it seems like that worked out all right, just as long as I can get this rag out of here now. All right, cool. So I'm gonna call this side of the engine done for now. It's gonna flip it around and install the flywheel and stator. This crank doesn't have the woodruff key or the locating key for the flywheel installed yet, so I'm gonna steal the one off the old crank. Looks like it's in pretty good shape. Now for installing the stator and the flywheel, it's pretty straightforward. The stator just uses two bolts, and before I slide this in, I've gotta put the clutch actuator arm into the bearing first. And now for the flywheel, the only thing you gotta consider is lining up the keyway with the woodruff key on the crank. And then this bike just uses a washer and a nut. And I believe I should be able to use this clutch holder tool to hold the flywheel in order to torque the nut down. Let's give it a shot. And this nut calls for 40 foot pounds. So that's as far as I'm gonna get on the engine build for today. Wish I could show you guys the engine covers, but that's gonna have to wait till the next video. So stay tuned for that. Man, they look so good. Can't wait to show you guys. And once again, this engine build would not have been possible without Rentrabit sending over the reload kit, which included the crank, bearings, gaskets, seals. The engine stand was supplied by Nihilo Concepts. Best one out there, I love that thing. The transmission polishing was done by Trick Engineering. 
Super nice addition to have. I cannot wait to test that out. And then for the clutch components, Rocky Mountain sent those over. And then the oil and assembly lube, that was provided by Maxima. So big, big thank you to those companies for helping out. So I'm gonna wrap up the video right here. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give it a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button down below as well. And I'll see you all in the engine cover video. Keep it prime, my friends.